Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, some news coming out today in Magic, kind of like any other game as well, something that you really need to stay on top of the news sometimes for because, well, things can change in a very big way and we are seeing something right now that could allude to some potential changes or things that we need to look out for in the future. Let's jump into it. The Hasbro CEO says we're going all in on becoming a digital play company. That's some big news, especially for Magic and maybe Magic's biggest format, which is not digital. But also, we'll see what happens in the future. Let's jump into this and even more. Our goal is to be shipping one to two new games per year, starting as early as late 2025, potentially early 2026, Chris Cox says. So... One to two games new per year, that is quite a bit. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe everyone out there, right? It, it takes the uh, the focus off of Magic, maybe, right? Pro probably not. Okay, here we go. So, as part of Hasbro's Q2 financial results, CEO Chris Cox has expressed the company's commitment to focus on digital play, mentioning a $125 million capital envelope for video games and one to two new releases yearly from late 2025, early 2026. That seems very ambitious. Ambitious. And if you haven't heard about the success of Monopoly Go, well, that probably is part of it. And uh, this article might get to that as well. In the Q&A portion of Hasbro's earnings call, as transcribed by Seeking Alpha, Cox noted that the recent appointment of John Height as the president of Wizards of the Coast in digital gaming, as well as an increasing number of execs with video games background to the company's board, is in line with the company's strategy. So again, a big mention right there about the new president of Wizards of the Coast, which I believe, correct me in the comments below, I believe came from Blizzard which as many of you out there know that might play Blizzard games or have played them in the past they're really good at monetizing things especially digitally so we shall see again where that big direction for the company goes again and I will get to this here in a little bit when that comes to you know the biggest format of magic not being digital what that might mean for that so he mentioned the aim to expand some of its mid-core and hardcore brands and digitize them. So what exactly that means, not exactly sure. Cox said that Hasbro's capital envelope is about $250 million a year, and that about half that is going to be digital games. That's a, a lot of dedication to those digital games. We shall see where that goes. We think that's a roughly around a steady state for us. He continued, our goal is to be shipping one, two new games per year, starting as uh, late as 2025, potentially early 2026. So again, that new focus potentially of new games that would be outside, I would assume, of the Magic Realm, but you never know on that. Lots of projects running around. Cox added that looking at the company's full lineup of licensed titles, Hasbro has 150 projects that are either out or in development. That is an absurd number, so a lot to focus on. Again, Hasbro, sure, focus on those things. You know, eyes away from Magic, okay, for a little bit, all right? He commented, I think, between our board game moves and between talent that we brought on board, most recently with John, which again is uh, in charge of WotC, but even before that, studio leaders have like Ames Kirshen, who, my apologies for any mispronunciations, who was in charge of Batman Arkham series of Warner, James Olin, who's the head of creative at BioWare, responsible for the first Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter Nights, Mass Effect. We're going all in on becoming a digital play company. So that's pretty crazy. When you say you're going all in on that, yeah, again, when you have all these, again, like you've got board games underneath you, which are obviously not digital, but you're turning some of them into digital potentially. And then also you've got Magic, which again is in the past not digital at all. Then you've got, you know, Magic Online and then a big move with Magic Arena. But again, still not taking in, you know, Commander, which is uh, you know, the most popular format out there. Where does that leave that? Again, if you are going all in, is there a plan for that? Oh, and there we go. Blizzard's John Height and former Bungie. There you go. Cool. There you go. All right. Looking at Hasbro's Q2 numbers revenue, Wizards of the Coast in digital gaming segment was up 20% year on year in stark contrast with declines in other verticals at the company. Consumer products was down 20%. Entertainment was down 90%. Oh my gosh. Year on year as Hasbro sold its E1 film to TV segment at Lionsgate and TV segment to Lionsgate. Okay, so... Again, we've seen these numbers before where like, hey, uh, you know, the Wizards of the Coast segment is going up. Other areas are going down. 
And, uh, yeah, that kind of puts the pressure on them to really squeeze, uh, which is the coast and, and, you know, magic in general for profits moving forward to kind of make up for those other losses. I would hope that, you know, after you'd sold off, you know, the, uh, you know, E1 film or whatever that was essentially like all those losses that you're like, okay, like maybe you can, uh, maybe get to a better place with some better investments moving forward. We shall see. And you don't have to, you know, just try to. I get everything you can out of, you know, commander players, but, uh, but we, we shall see what happens with that. Okay. For the first half of 2024, Wizards of the Coast and Digital Gaming Road is up 20% year on year. Just said that. The success of the segment was in part attributed to Scopely's Monopoly Go, which is grossed over $3 billion, absurd, in revenue making Hasbro the top licensor of video games over the past year, according to Eldora. Cox said, uh, I just looked this up in the App Store. I've never played Monopoly Go. It's apparently the number one board game app right now. Pretty crazy. So that is going well for them. And again, a reason why they're like, okay, digital, okay, digital, okay, digital. Big moves right now. We shall see where that actually leads things with magic, though. Because again, that is the billion dollar question in the room. Multiple billion, potentially, is how are they going to keep things going with Arena and what potential changes they might have moving forward. The continued success of Baldur's Gate 3 is also mentioned security factor to the segment's good quarter. Again, yeah, I've heard many good things about Baldur's Gate 3 as well. As we look at the business of play, it's clear the digital digital is here to stay in a bigger factor than ever in how successful toy and game companies will grow and strengthen their brands, Cox said. We're years ahead of our peers, having already spent hundreds of millions of dollars building out our own studio capacity and expanding our brands through digital partnerships. Games like Baldur's Gate 3 show us what the future looks like. So again, Interesting to see that, again, they have had some successes in that. And again, areas outside of D&D &D and Magic in general, and then within as well, and how that might drive the focus to digital even further. Okay, now let's jump over to some Magic news. And I promise I'm going to connect the dots on this here, Commander players out there. But on Pioneer, we've got an announcement a little while ago. Tournament Pioneer by end of 2024. Our goal since introducing the Explorer format has been to bring Pioneer to MTG Arena. Through anthologies and remastered sets were nearly there. We are planning for Tournament Pioneer to arrive on MTG Arena by the close of 2024. And in the meantime, we'll continue to expand Explore to reach that goal. Look for more details and anthologies to come, including Pioneer Masters, a draftable set exclusive to MTG Arena that'll include all star cards of Pioneer. So when it comes to actually getting well, Commander potentially on MTG Arena, which, again, when it comes to them being like, okay, we're all in on digital, that's got to be something that's on the back of their mind. Now, obviously, Commander is a completely different beast. Number one, you've got the socialization factor, which is, I'd say, the biggest draw for Commander, at least for me and for many players out there. Though there are definitely players out there that do play on Magic Online, but that is an ancient kind of, you know, technology versus MTG Arena, which is much more polished. One of the big hurdles when it comes to actually getting Commander on Magic Arena is that card pool. And actually, Pioneer getting that on Arena uh, by the end of 2024 is actually a pretty big deal because that shows just how many cards are actually on MTG Arena at that point. Because again, they have to work backwards, essentially. They have to go back in time, add old cards, older cards than when MTG Arena started, to the actual program and you know actually when it comes to magic there's so many different weird rules and stuff like that and how things work that obviously it takes some time to actually code all that you know it took forever i believe it took nine years uh when it comes to magic online going all the way back to get everything for commander legacy and vintage let me know in the comments if i'm wrong that like after they were like yeah we're gonna do it and it's like nine more years okay so when it comes to Pioneer, I believe the first set is from Return to Ravnica. So again, working that way back, when it comes to the number of cards, yeah, Pioneer has, what, 1,113 legal cards, which is a ton. And again, many of those are already on MTG Arena from when MTG Arena started. But also, there's a lot, a giant chunk that were not. So they are kind of going that process of working their way backwards at the exact same time they're adding new sets too. And so this is probably the first step in the process that if Commander was ever going to be on MTG Arena, it would be, again, a long project. Again, I think, like what I said, what, nine years for Magic Online to actually get there? It might be the same or even more when it comes to the actual process of Commander if that ever is going to happen. Because again, we've got 1,100 or 1,000, 11,000 if I could talk, 913 cards versus Commander. We've got 27,986 cards right now. And of course, that number is only going up. 
That being said, obviously, with newer properties coming out, newer sets coming out, at least the ones that are, again, legal for Commander purposes, those are going to be added to Commander already. Added to Commander. <laughs> already added to the pool already. So, essentially, again, working your way back, still probably about, you know, 16,000 cards short. Now, obviously, there are some redundancies when it comes to certain cards. Like, if you're adding, say, my example is always, like, Hill Giant. If you're adding Hill Giant in there, there's probably already, like, uh, I mean, it's very easy for you to just add, like, a Vanilla 3-3, okay, for four mana. So, there you go. Copy-paste. That being said, again, it is a giant hurdle to actually add that. Will they start to try to make that push? We shall see because, yeah, there is kind of like this potentially lumbering cash cow in the distance that is if they try to get Commander onto a digital platform like MTG Arena. I know it's already on Magic Online. That's just a different beast. It's an older beast and it's not nearly as polished. One of the steps is, of course, and probably the biggest step, in my opinion, is that giant card pool. They literally need to work so far back to get there to actually get it started. I mean, I think the idea would probably be, again, like baby steps at a time. I mean, which is a pretty big baby step, which is, again, getting that Pioneer on, which they already announced. That end of the 2024, they're getting Pioneer up, okay, which is pretty crazy. So... Moving from there, then to add even more to the card pool, going back to get Modern potentially on MTG Arena, right? Because Modern was, uh, oh my goodness, it's right after what, Odyssey. It's literally after I quit uh, Magic for the first time, after Odyssey and Onslaught and all those. Was it Mirrodin? Is that the one of the first uh, Modern modern players out there? Please let me know. I believe it's back there. So again, a couple more years back, moving back further and further and further and further each time adding more and more cards to the pool and just kind of working your way back adding in another format and then eventually getting to the point where you have legacy vintage commander added as well because you have this giant card pool so that is another thing another difference between again well yeah you've got like the cards right when it comes to pioneer and commander another difference is simply well commander itself is um yeah multiplayer currently they don't have multiplayer functionality on arena we do have like you know brawl which is kind of like commander but not and so that is a one-on-one -on -one format with the you know card pool that it is and some slight changes as well but yes when it comes to the popularity of brawl it's nowhere near as popular as commander of course and so their idea of like okay we're going digital we're going really big into digital what was the quote again from the hasbro ceo uh we got we're going all in on becoming a digital play company so again if you're going all in and the biggest part of one of your biggest brands is you know not digital are you going to start to get that focus a bit more on hey commander on arena make it happen is that going to be a push again there's different things that have to line up again you've got to make arena have that card pull you've got to make the actual you know multiplayer functionality work on arena which is complex because obviously board states can be absurd in commander and yeah one-on-one -on -one is a different beast than four players with you know their own boards and seeing what's going on can be quite difficult not that i don't believe they couldn't do it again like my expectations for Arena when it came out were nowhere near as high as what it ended up being. It ended up being a very impressive, uh, yeah, client, essentially. And so I believe that they could do it. It's just, are they going to? And again, when it comes to all those factors, another one is, will players play Commander on Arena? I, I would think that they would. But again, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest draws for a Commander, at least for me and many others out there, is that socialization. You get to socialize while you are playing. Having other players right there with you is a lot different than, yeah, just sitting at your computer and then maybe hitting like a haha -ha button every now and then uh, to, you know, they'll say something or like an emoji pops up, whatever it is. Um, yeah, being able to actually socialize with those around you is a big draw for Commander. So where is that kind of push and pull with that, of course? And then uh, I guess another factor with all of this is, well, I mean, I guess with that too, with, with playing with people that you can't really see right there, the turns might be able to take a long time. Like you'll have the rope there, but obviously like some decisions happen and you've got four players playing and there's a lot of deciding factors and a lot of different things. So there's a lot of hoops to jump through with that. But also, and finally again, Hasbro obviously wants to monetize these things as much as they can. How in the world do you go about having the economy for commander on arena compared to other formats on arena where yeah you're, you're not buying individual cards uh you are uh, you know using the gem system or whatever it is you know dusting you know with uh with hearthstone but i don't think they even have that right they have the gem system and yeah trying to actually build a deck 
it, literally just take any of your commander decks and it could have cards from here there and everywhere it's not like from like the most recent set all the cards potentially you've got cards from here there and everywhere how in the world do you go about building your deck in that way is it more of like a monthly pass cost kind of essentially to play commander where you're like okay like i'm paying x amount of dollars each month and i get access to every single card out there is that something that happens are there different tiers to it how in the world does this happen so again a lot of factors into this it is interesting to see again that they are making big splash moves to go into digital play they have in the past talked about you know magic on arena you know like that is kind of being like a far off thing that may or may not happen essentially they did make an announcement recently again about pioneer getting there and they are kind of tippy toeing back toward other formats as well again it wouldn't surprise me if they're like eventually okay Mo uh, modern is going to be on arena at some point because we are moving back we're getting more and more cards in there and once you get to there that's another step further to closer to getting the commander cards on there too so will this happen i do not know but it is interesting and again with all this it is also kind of with this huge thing in the air of yeah i mean wizards uh has been kind of over monetizing in a way in magic lately and that kind of push to to make it to, to to bring all these new digital properties in if that kind of fails are they going to keep okay oh we need more products from commander we need more products for magic we need to actually make up for those losses because of this move or it can be something like okay they're not focusing enough on magic or again how does this play into arena coming on as well we shall see again the biggest thing in my opinion the biggest hold up on this is just time all right right now again at the end of 2024 we're apparently going to be at almost 12,000 cards on arena i mean maybe i guess slightly more because it's probably alchemy that's not included in this as well but sure 12 uh, almost 12,000 cards are legal pioneer on arena and then when it comes to getting to commander you got more than twice as much as that so again it's something that could take a long 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 time to happen will it happen eventually yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, anyone's call because <laughs> they are trying to move things digitally, but uh, it is something that there's pluses, there's minuses. And again, there's a lot of questions up in the air as to how all of it would work, how all of it would function. What in the world is it going to be? And with that, this episode is coming to a close. Comment below with your thoughts on it. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.